Hey, what's going on guys? It's Rachel. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back. If you're returning, I am a part-time reseller on sites like eBay, Poshmark, Mercari. So I find goods, usually fashion, um, women's clothing, shoes, accessories, um, but actually lately a little bit of everything. And I resell it online to make a profit. And um, so today I want to share with you my top 15, we'll go 15 today, most profitable sales for um, April of 2022. So I, I sell a lot of like the same things over and over. I'm, I'm more of a volume seller. So I flip a lot of things for not a ton of profit. So it would be very tedious to share with you every single sale I make. Uh, and it would be a lot of repetitive. And this is just way more fun, I think, to show you guys what sold for the most money over the course of the last month for me. So if you're into content like this, certainly subscribe to my channel. I love sharing my reseller life here with you on this channel of what's working for me, what's selling for me in hopes that it helps you in your reseller business. So drop me a like if you find this helpful as well. That helps my channel and lets me know that you like content like this. So April was a terrible month for me. Okay, let's be honest. Um, I did a 300 listing challenge. I burnt myself out really bad. That was not wise. Let me just tell you, uh, I did list 300 items. I made it to the end, but I was tired and um, I won't do it again. And to be honest, my sales did not increase. So the volume of listing versus the sales I was making, it just wasn't there. So it was super frustrating. And, you know, my goal, you may hear resellers say this, that they try to um, increase their number of active listings. So my goal is not to increase the number of active listings. My goal is to increase my number of sales. And if I'm listing more, more sales should follow uh, naturally, which they did not. Um, so wasn't the best month. I wouldn't recommend trying to overextend yourself with more listings than you can handle, um, at least based on my experience. You guys have told me that you like videos that are a little bit longer, maybe in the 20 to 30 minute range. And these videos don't usually take that long when I do 10. So I'm going to do 15. And then at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of the state of my business and with some of the changes to the reseller world, I guess, lately, just kind of things that I'm doing to um, keep up with it. Or, you know, I hate to use the word pivot, but pivot to uh, hopefully keep my business sustained, you know, despite the changes. So stay tuned for that. What I'll do is show you number 15 to number one, all the way up to number one being the highest profiting item for April, 2022. I'll put the screenshot here. I'll tell you what platform it sold on, how much I got for it, all that good stuff. So let's uh, let's get started. Number 15 was this anthropology dress. It was uh, Savoy was the brand. It was a size four. And I was super proud of this because I actually found this at Dollar Day at Goodwill, brand new with tags for 99 cents. And it ended up selling for $43. So didn't quite get as much as I thought, but considering I only paid a dollar for it, there was a great profit margin there for me. So that was exciting. Number 14 were these Judy Blue jeans. They were relaxed fit, size nine. Um, these were actually 50% off at Goodwill. So I paid $4.12 and I sold them on eBay for $35. Number 13, probably my favorite brand of all time to resell. I'm not going to lie. Lily Pulitzer. This was a striped dress. This one actually sat around for a while. I purchased this at, right at the beginning of the year in January and it took until April to sell, but it did eventually sell on eBay for $38. Um, this was a little bit more of a dated piece, I think. So I wasn't expecting to get top dollar for it, but I'll take 38 for that one. Number 12 is this Fossil Messenger bag. Now, I don't have great luck finding handbags at Goodwill. Um, I do think that they pull out the better ones and they auction them or they don't put them on the floor at least I, or I miss them maybe maybe they just go that quick but um this was a genuine leather vintage messenger bag the brand is fossil which I know has a pretty good resale value to begin with um and I've kind of learned that if I am going to look at the bags at Goodwill I have to look for genuine leather because that's really my only chance. So anyway, this was $4.99. Um, it was only listed for about a week and it sold for $35 on eBay. So that's exciting. 
Um, number 11 were these trouser jeans from Gold Sign. So second time I found this brand, second time they've made my top list for a month. Um, these sat for a little while. I bought them in December, like right after Christmas, um, but they still sold for $42 on eBay. Number 10, I featured in a recent thrift haul. It was this soft surroundings like kimono. It was like a sweater kimono. I don't really know what it was, but it was really pretty. It was embroidered and it had lots of beading and detail. Um, I got it 50% off. So it was $3.12 at Goodwill and uh, it sold within a day. You'll probably see this. I'm going to put a what sold fast video. I haven't done one of those in a while. I plan to do one of those for this month. So uh, you'll see that in the what sold fast video too. But I got $45 for this on eBay the day after I listed it. So that was super exciting. Number nine are these Everlane jeans and Everlane consistently does well for me when I find it or when I get it. I've gotten a lot of Everlane in mystery boxes lately. Um, this one was in uh, the more recent Jomar denim box that I got and they sold for $49.99 on eBay. So I think, spoiler alert, I'll still do a 90 day update on that box, but basically this one pair of jeans paid for the entire box. So no complaints there. Um, number eight, I was so excited to find this. I found this at the Fancy Goodwill. The brand was Versace and it wasn't like high-end designer Versace. It was some like spin-off. It was like the techno Versace. Um, I listed it based on comps and they were going like around $50 on eBay. Uh, first, I had a hard time telling you if it was men's or women's, but I settled on men's. I listed it um, as men's and it sold for $50 on eBay. So, hey, I only paid six bucks. That's fine by me. Um, number seven are these Loved Destroyed Current Elliott jeans. And I actually featured these in a recent thrift haul as well. Um, I was nervous about these because Current Elliott hasn't done great for me lately. I debated sending them to the Real Real, but I decided not to because the Real Real payouts haven't been great lately either, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so I ended up listing them and surprisingly they sold for my full asking price of $54.99 and they were only listed for about a week. So those sold on eBay. Number six, my favorite brand again, which spoiler alert, she shows up one more time in this countdown, Lily Pulitzer, this blue shift dress, it's the Janus dress. And this one sold for $75 on Poshmark. So there's only four Poshmark sales on this 15 list, which I'll talk about in a minute too. But uh, yeah, this was a $75 sale on a dress I paid $7.24 for. Um, so this one was new with tag and I picked it up at Goodwill. Excellent find. I was excited when I found it. I was excited when it sold. So there you have it. Um, number five, ooh, top five. Okay, number five is this J. Crew maxi dress, and I got this at Uptown Cheapskate, and I really am not surprised that this sold quickly. $74.99 on eBay. Uh, I paid $19.50 for it. So this is exactly what I want. If I pay more for something, I expect that it's going to sell higher. So it's great when it's a low cost of goods and a high sale, but that's not always um, the case, you know? Those are more like like unicorns, right? Like diamonds in the rough. Like that's not the stuff we find every day. That's not bread and butter. And although it's great when we do find it, like I know me, me personally, I don't find like super high end stuff for $6 at Goodwill every time I go. It just doesn't happen. So this I paid up for $19.50, um, sold it for $75, which is still a great profit margin, even though I paid up for it. So I am gonna try doing more of that kind of thing. Um, as time goes on, it's sort of something I'm experimenting with. And yes, I will sell my American Eagle and Gap and uh, Madewell for 20 bucks, whatever, and get my $10 profit all day long, those quick flips. Those are the ones I don't show you, but it's these that when you do find these unicorns, you do find these great pieces in the wild, so to speak, that they're worth picking up. So number four, are these Tory Burch wedges, and I got these at Goodwill for $6. Again, 
Um, not something you find, I don't find every day, but I was all over them. They were in great condition. They looked like they'd barely been worn. They sold in just like three days. Poshmark sale, $85 offer accepted out the door. So that was exciting. This was a cool find. Number three, uh, this I also got at the Fancy Goodwill. And it is a Formula One racing vest and it's men's. I don't know anything about Formula One, uh, but it looked cool. I picked this up because it looked cool and it ended up being cool. It sold for $69.99 on eBay. I paid six bucks for it. It did sit for a couple months. It didn't have a ton of interest at first, so I wasn't sure that it was going to be um, more than just cool looking. I didn't really, I kind of stopped believing it was going to be profitable, but I'm glad I held out because it ended up selling for a full asking price. It shipped overseas. I think this was a global sale, so it went over to England. Number two, here she is again, Lily Pulitzer, this skipper popover. This I got at Goodwill, and it was a day that I had literally 10 minutes to shop, and I went straight for the jackets because, um, well, because it was the, the section that's right by the door. And I found two Lily popovers and a Patagonia jacket. And I ran out of the store in 10 minutes with like $300 in profit, which again, never happens. Like I struck gold that day. But anyway, this popover did end up selling for $108 on Poshmark. So that was so exciting. Like I wish every Goodwill trip could be like that, but of course it's not. All right, number one. So I hate that this is my number one sale, but I'm glad this is my number one sale. I have some very mixed emotions about reporting this as my number one sale for April. It is this Lauren Ralph Lauren cashmere sweater, and it came in a Cozy Threads box. <laughs> and if you want, I will link my Cozy Threads experience up here if you want to know why I'm sort of feeling mixed emotions about this because um, I've had terrible experience with cozy threads. This came out of the one box that I said was decent and um, it ended up selling for $99.99 on eBay. Full asking price. It was a cashmere new with tag sweater. My cost of goods out of this box was $6.30. So the profit was great. I think it paid for almost the whole box, at least like majority of it. So Great sale. I mean, I'm, gl I'm glad it sold. I really am. Um, a little redemption for Cozy in my mind. I'm still not super happy with them. I still haven't got my refund, by the way, from this fiasco that I had posted here. Um, I'm still waiting on my refund. Don't have it yet. So as soon as I get it, I'll, I'll update you guys um, in my video. So let me know in the comments if you're still here, uh, what was your highest profiting item for April. Let's share with each other and, you know, talk about what we're picking up, what's selling well for us, even in this crazy times, um, which leads me to 2022 strategy. And I was going to make a whole video on this, but um, here's the thing. I'm not one to get all hyped up by hearsay right? You don't see me come on my channel and talk about current events and speculate. And I don't like to do that because, well, quite frankly, it's just noise. I just, I don't like to hype up what's not worth hyping up, right? I like to stick to the facts and tell you guys what is working for me. Um, because I think that's what helps how we help each other is talk about what is working, right? But that being said, um, there have been some changes to uh, things that are beyond my control, which are going to force me to sort of change up what I'm doing. So I want to just be transparent and let you guys know, you know, it's not all rainbows and butterflies over here, just because I have a tendency to talk about what is working. Um, that doesn't mean that everything is just working for me all the time, because it's not. And this whole reseller business is a big game of trial and error. So I'm in the same boat. I really am. Um, Poshmark sales in April were very slow. Now, sales in general for me were very slow um, in April. It was not just Poshmark. Uh, eBay was down and Mercari sales were way down, even though Mercari sales are not really 
significant for me anyway, but they had still dropped. Um, Kitizen, I sell on frequently, or I was, but I haven't made a Kitizen sale in a few months, I don't think. And then Facebook Marketplace is the only place that has been, I think, I've made more sales on um, than I usually do. But even though, even so, sales were down for me overall. Now, I'm not blaming the platforms here. Um, I, there's been some stuff going on with Poshmark that I think may have somewhat contributed to my Poshmark sales being down, but I'm not going to speculate because here's the thing. Number one, I can't do anything about it. Number two, I don't actually know. Um, you know, I moved in March. I didn't list a single new thing in March. Um, so it could be just a wave after effect of that. I haven't run any sales on eBay. Um, I have done a lot of new listings, but that doesn't necessarily equal sales. And I, I don't know the exact reason. But anyway, um, strategy wise for me is to keep pushing on. Um, I am going to keep cross listing. I do use list perfectly to cross list and whether the platforms are up, down or sideways, I don't know. My goal is to get my stuff listed on as many platforms as possible. So my potential for sale is as high as it can possibly be because it's in front of the biggest possible audience. So I use list perfectly. If you want to try it, there's a link below for 30% off. Uh, that's what works for me. And I am going to continue to just make sure that my stuff is cross listed on every platform. Um, the other thing that's changed is thread up. Um, I haven't heard a lot talked about this yet. I guess I haven't gone looking for it yet though, but, uh, it had been a long time since I was able to get a thread up label and I, I had some trickle in here and there. If I was checking and I happened to grab one, I got some partner kits recently. Um, but thread up did open up their clean out kits again in April, which was super exciting, except, um, they stopped accepting a lot of brands. So I'll I'll kind of scroll through the list here if I can find it. There are thousands of brands they are no longer paying out for. So um, a lot of the stuff I used to send them is not worth sending them anymore because I'm going to get zero payout for it. Even if I used to get like, um, you know, just a couple cents, maybe a dollar here or there. Like I'm talking about stuff I was going to donate anyway, Forever 21, Fast Fashion, all of that stuff. I used to send it in. I used to get a dollar or two. Maybe I got it in a mystery box or, you know, stuff I, I didn't, like I was going to donate anyway. Um, so that stuff is not going to be worth sending the thread up. I can try buy, sell trade stores with that stuff. But again, by the time I pack it all up, run it up there, sit there and wait for them to process just to give me six or seven dollars, not really worth my time. So that brings me to the point of the mystery boxes, um, starting with thread up um, with them still saying, feel free to send us this stuff, but we're not going to pay you for it. Where do we think that stuff is going to end up in the mystery boxes? in the DIY denim boxes. Now I did an experiment in my most recent thread up box, the denim box, which I'll post here if you guys want to see it. And uh, I listed everything. I don't care if it was Forever 21. I don't care if it was Vanilla Star, or Walmart, Target. I listed it as long as it was not like damaged. Um, so I really want to see, are people still going to buy this stuff on Poshmark or eBay? Is it going to sell? Is it worth spending the time listing it because I can't send it in to make money on it. So check that out. I'll do a 90 day update on that one. Um, just That's just part of my strategy change here. Um, and then the other, I guess, mystery box change, which you guys have commented on every video I posted because my I batch my videos and sometimes they're a few weeks out. Jomar, okay, I don't know what happened to Jomar. I ordered a bunch of boxes like three days before the site went down and I must have got like the last of it. I, I don't know. But then I scheduled out all those unboxings and uh, you guys were seeing them even after the site shut down. The site shut down for me too. I don't know what happened. I know on social media, there was a lot of back and forth about what happened. I don't know what happened, but I know I can't source from them right now because um, they're not sending anything. And of course, Cozy, you guys saw my horror story with that. So I'm not buying anything from them, which means 
I have a lot of shifting to do. So um, really what I am focusing on for May and ongoing, again, probably not going to order as many mystery boxes. I think the name of the game is stick to thrifting for right now. Um, so you'll probably see some more thrift hauls. Once I get into sourcing again, I just listed 300 pieces, guys. It might be a minute before I go sourcing again. So we will see. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to focus on just listing what I have, figuring out price points and how to move. What's the most effective way to move what I already have on hand? Um, so I'm interested in your thoughts on this stuff too. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys are doing to change up what you're doing. And I, I get it. Nobody wants to change up, right? It's not necessarily fun, but, uh, you know, we, we have to. If we want to maintain our businesses, we can't wait for the platforms, for the liquidation companies, for the, the online thrift stores to change what they're doing. We have to change what we're doing. So let me know what you guys are doing. I would love to have that discussion with you guys as well. Um, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, let me know if you like this format where I talk a little strategy at the end of the video. Again, I'm trying to keep us in the 20 to 30 minute mark. I know you guys like to do these, uh, to watch these while you're listing or, or working. So definitely want to hear your feedback on that. Drop me a like if you're still here and you have not already. Um, definitely lets me know that you're interested in this kind of content so I know what to make more of. Make sure you're subscribed. I have lots of updates coming up. And uh, oh, I am posting this month, I'm actually going to record it today, the top 10 best and the top 10 worst mystery boxes of 2021. So I know the video is a little overdue, but because of the move and stuff, it kind of went on the back burner, but I'm ready to show you guys which ones came out on top and which ones were just awful. So make sure you are subscribed for that. Hit the notification bell if you want to get notified when those videos posts. Otherwise, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.